Which CPF retirement sum should you go for? Should you go for the basic retirement sum, which is supposedly enough to cover your basic living needs? Or maybe the full retirement sum, which can give us a much higher payout, is a better choice? Or with living costs on the rise, is it better to go for the enhanced retirement sum, which can cover our desired lifestyle? That's what we'll be exploring in today's video. We'll be going through each of the retirement sums to find out what are the benefits and trade-offs. Then we'll also look at statistics and studies to find out which is the best retirement sum you should go for. But before I start, do join my Telegram chat group to discuss anything related to money or ask any questions that you may have. All right, let's jump right in. First up, what exactly is the CPF retirement sum? Basically, the retirement sum is an amount which the government has come up with to indicate how much you need to save up for your retirement, based on real data of course. And depending on the amount that you have saved up in your CPF, you will receive different money payouts when you turn 65. So there are three levels of retirement sums that are available to us. First, basic retirement sum or BRS. The concept behind BRS is based on the expenses of a lower middle retiree household. It also assumes that the person owns a property that can last him up to 95 years old and he does not need to pay any rent during retirement. Then if you take BRS and multiply it by 2, you will get the full retirement sum or FRS. The higher payout can be used to cover your basic living expenses while also covering any of your rental expenses. Finally, the enhanced retirement sum or ERS is set at 40 times the BRS amount, making this suitable for those who want a higher money income during retirement. So with these retirement sums, how much money can we expect to receive when we retire? Check this out. Depending on which year you turn 55, the retirement sum and the monthly payouts will be different. So for example, if you turn 55 in 2024, and if you manage to save up to the FRS amount or $205,800, you receive $1,670 per month when you turn 65. Or if you manage to save the ERS amount of $308,700, the payout will also increase accordingly. What's interesting is that if we take the payout and divide it by the amount saved at 55, it will be as though we are getting a 9% guaranteed yield on the initial amount for as long as we live. Obviously, this is just a very simple calculation that does not take into account any compounding nor any bequest payout when we pass away. If you want to take that into account, Keith from Investment Modes has actually done an analysis on this where he found that based on when you pass away, the internal rate of return would be lower. Next, if you defer your payouts from 65 to 70 years old due to the magic of compounding, the payouts will also increase up to 7% for each year you defer. So does this mean that we should just go for the enhanced retirement sum to receive the highest amount of payout then? To answer this, let's look at some statistics first. According to the Minimum Income Standard 2023 study, if you are single and 65 years and older, you will need $1,492 for a basic standard of living. This includes food expenses of about $400 per month, housing-related expenses take up another $330, and the rest includes transportation, healthcare, recreation, and other miscellaneous expenses. The second study we can look at is the Household Expenditure Survey 2017-2018. The study found that for non-working persons aged 65 years and older, the monthly expenditure is $1,154 in 2017-2018. So if we apply a 3% annual inflation rate, the current amount would come out to be around $1,400, which is quite close to the amount that we got from the earlier study. The third source is from dollars and cents. It's not so much a study, but instead real-life examples from two retirees. One retiree shared that her basic expenses are 50% lesser as compared to her working years, as she no longer incurs expenses as a caregiver to her parents, and she doesn't need a car or a helper anymore. Another retiree found that while his expenses has reduced, he did not have to change his lifestyle at all. That's because his son has finished his studies and larger expenses such as home mortgage were clear. The examples from these two retirees coincide with a 2021 report by Singapore Department of Statistics, where it found that retired households do indeed spend less as compared to general households. Through these reports, we can see that when someone retires, his or her expenses would reduce to around 1.5k a month, which means the $1,670 monthly payout from the full retirement sum is good enough, right? It depends. According to OCBC Financial Wellness Index 2023, all of the Singaporeans surveyed are looking for a retirement lifestyle that's above $2,665. In that case, FRS is definitely not enough. Instead, you will need enhanced retirement sum to get that kind of payout. However, there are a few fine prints to take note of. Quick pause, did you know that besides Reboost's fantastic sign-up rewards, 
They also have a few useful tools to help you analyze stock prices. So on the stock page, if you tap on the four squares button under the stock chart, then if you select indicators, you'll be able to add popular charting indicators such as moving averages, Bollinger Bands, RSI to analyze the price movements. But if you are bad at reading stock charts like me, you can tap on indicator signals instead where you get a list of indicators which were detected in short, medium, and long time frames. This is also available in the analysis tab, which can be seen when you scroll all the way down till you see the technical analysis section, where you will again see some useful signals. What's nice is that Weibo also shows you the supports and resistance for each time frame, making it easier for you to analyze stock movements. Right now, Weibo is running a very generous sign up promotion. If you sign up using my link down below, make an initial deposit of $500 US dollars or more into your account, you will first get 5 free shares worth $10 US dollars to $500 US dollars each. Then, if you complete 5 buy trades of US stocks and ETFs with each buy trade worth $100 US dollars or more or options within 30 days of funding your account, you will get 30 trading vouchers worth $450 US dollars in total. Webu has also upsized their money boot promotion where if you are able to activate and subscribe at least $250,000 US dollars to Webu, who fill the requirements and maintain the funds for one year, you will get to earn $5,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares. Lastly, there's a new transfer promo from which you could possibly get up to $3,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares by fulfilling the requirements. So if you are interested in trying out Webu, do sign up to them using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. First, the biggest downside of CPF Life is that it's not inflation-proof. That's because both the basic and standard plans have a fixed payout, with the basic plan payouts even dropping further when the CPF balance falls below 60 k Then, while the escalating plan payout increases by 2% each year, it is still barely on par with Singapore's average inflation rate. And spoiler alert, unless you manage to live past 78 years old, the escalating plan's payout is actually lower than the basic and standard plan in the earlier years. The average core inflation rate in Singapore over the last 30 years is 1.59%, which means on average, your CPF payout is losing its purchasing power by this amount. However, that's just the average inflation. In 2022, consumer prices shot up by 6.1%, the fastest rate of increase since 2008. While the inflation rate has come back down a little, it is expected to go back up in 2024. Why? GST law. This just means your CPF payouts has just lost even more value during this period. Second, CPF life payouts can actually decrease no matter which plan you are on. What? That's because payouts don't just come from your CPF retirement account. Instead, they also come from the annuity pool, where interest earned on the annuity premium is shared among all members to form part of the monthly payouts. This means the payout can change based on the mortality rates and interest rates. And with life expectancy increasing, there's a chance that the money payouts could go lower in the future. Same for the interest rate, where both the retirement account interest and the interest floor will be reviewed periodically. In the worst case scenario, the retirement account floor can be reduced, especially when the economy is not doing well. For example, during the COVID pandemic, the computer rate for retirement account dropped to as low as 2.22%. Third, one of the retirees from Dollars and Cents article also brought up a very good point, and that is in order to keep your expenses low during retirement, you need to have good health. Otherwise, your medical expenses will go up. While the payout from full retirement sum may be enough for basic standard of living, it is definitely not enough to cover the healthcare costs if you have certain illnesses, such as cancer and kidney failure. According to the Singapore Cancer Registry Annual Report 2021, more and more people are getting diagnosed with cancer. Plus, the older you get, the higher chance you might be diagnosed with cancer. That's good, eh? If you have a term insurance plan, your coverage may end after a specified term. For example, 65 years old. After that, you will no longer have coverage. But what about Medishield Life? Isn't it enough to cover the medical expenses? Yes, but there's a limit to how much you can claim per month. For example, if you're on a prostate cancer treatment, the out-of-pocket payment amount for the drug can reach $3,360 per month. All this points to one thing. Law, you can't just rely on your CPF payouts alone. You will also have to invest your money in the stock market to hedge against inflation while also preparing for any unforeseen circumstances, such as health issues. So, what can you expect from the stock market? In the US, the S&P 500 has delivered an average inflation-adjusted return of 6.37% over the long term. 
While in Singapore, dividend stocks such as DBS or REITs can give a dividend yield of anywhere between 3 to even 6%. And the best part, these dividend payouts will increase over time, meaning the yield for your initial investment will go up. This, by the way, is called the Quay Lapis Investment Strategy from 1M65, where at the base, you have CPF Life giving you a steady payout and a safety net in case things go wrong. Then further up, you can add on investments to potentially give you higher returns. So with that in mind, which retirement sum should you go for? Personally, I would go for the full retirement sum as the higher payout from FRS alone is sufficient for a basic standard of living in the first few years. And it's also pretty achievable as long as you consistently top up 8k to your CPF SA or MA every year. Though, FRS alone wouldn't be enough as you will still need to cater for inflation and any unforeseen circumstances such as serious illnesses. In that case, you will also need to add on a layer of investment. For example, if we expect our monthly expenses to be $2,665 like in the OCBC study using the 4% rule, we would need to add on at least $298,500 portfolio for additional returns. Plus, what's nice is that the investment will also give you the potential of early retirement while also giving you additional liquidity during emergencies. But what about the basic retirement sum? I feel that it's okay to go for it if you expect your monthly expenses to be lower during retirement. So your house needs to be paid off, your kids have already spread their wings, and you are perfectly healthy. But because the payout is so low, you won't have any margin for error in case things go wrong. That's why you will need to have a bigger investment portfolio to cater for any additional expenses. How big are we talking about? Let's say if we expect our money expense to be at $1,500, the BRS has taken care of the initial $900. So using the 4% rule, we will need to have a minimum of $180,000 portfolio, which is quite achievable. Or if you want a better retirement lifestyle of maybe $2,665 per month, our portfolio would then have to be at least $529,500. Finally, what about the enhanced retirement sum? ERS is good if you prefer an even higher guaranteed income stream from CPF Life. However, you'll be locking up an additional $102,900 into your CPF. If you had just invested that money over 10 years with an 8% annual return, the money would grow to $222,153. And that money is totally liquid instead of being locked up in CPF. So here's a tip for you. Keep your options open and don't rush to aim for the ERS. At 55 years old, once you have met your full retirement sum, you can withdraw any amount that's left over in your OA. This means your OA now turns into a high yield savings account. In that case, you can keep the OA money in your CPF to continue earning interest or you can choose to withdraw the money if you have a better use for the money. Anyway, that was a quick analysis of which retirement sum do you need for your retirement. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.